In the day's other news, Israel launched a new wave of airstrikes in Gaza, retaliating for a rocket attack by Hamas on Sunday. Israeli missiles flattened multi-story buildings in Gaza City, lighting up the night sky. One building housed the offices of Hamas's leader. The airstrikes were answered by another round of rockets from Gaza. The burst of fighting came as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was in Washington. Israel will not tolerate this. I will not tolerate this. I have a simple message to Israel's enemies. We will do whatever we must do to defend our people and defend our state. President Trump used Netanyahu's visit to officially recognize Israel's claim to the Golan Heights along the Syrian border. The White House signing ceremony reversed more than 50 years of U.S. policy in the Middle East. It was swiftly condemned by Syria as an attack on its sovereignty. The United States today condemned Russia for sending military forces into Venezuela over the weekend. Local news accounts said Russian transport planes ferried in nearly 100 troops. A U.S. State Department official called it a reckless escalation. Meanwhile, a new blackout hit Caracas less than two weeks after Venezuela's worst electricity blackout ever. More international aid is pouring into southeastern Africa after a tropical cyclone that killed more than 750 people. Humanitarian agencies scrambled today to get help to the hardest hit areas. Government officials in Mozambique said they are making progress. The conditions on the ground are improving. We managed to repose communication by road, which is helping the teams that are, are supposed to deliver uh, uh, services and help to the, to the communities. We are more organized now after the chaos that we had, so we're delivering food and shelter to more people today. An estimated 1.8 million people were affected by the storm in Mozambique, Zimbabwe and Malawi. Half of them are children left orphaned, separated from their parents or homeless. In Thailand, both of the two top political parties claimed a right to form a government after Sunday's elections, the first since a 2014 military coup. The military-backed party won the most votes, but under a complicated electoral system, the anti-military, populist party was likely to win the most legislative seats. Back in this country, New Mexico's United States Senator Tom Udall announced that he will not run for re-election. The two-term Democrat said he wants to find other ways to serve the public. He was first elected to the Senate in 2008, after 10 years in the House of Representatives. Also today, Democratic Congressman Jose Serrano of New York announced that he has Parkinson's disease and is retiring after 16 terms. He is 75 and the most senior Latino in Congress. Federal prosecutors today charged attorney Michael Avenatti with extortion and bank and wire fraud. He's best known for representing adult film star Stormy Daniels, who allegedly had an affair with President Trump. In one case announced today, prosecutors in New York said that Avenatti tried to extort more than $20 million from Nike by threatening bad publicity. By engaging in the conduct alleged in the complaint, Avenatti was not acting as an attorney. A suit and tie doesn't mask the fact that, at its core, this was an old-fashioned shakedown. Separately, in Los Angeles, Avenatti was accused of embezzling $1.6 million from a client. A dozen suspects in a nationwide college admissions bribery case pled not guilty today in federal court in Boston. The defendants include test administrators and former coaches from Georgetown, the University of Southern California, and Wake Forest. They are accused in a multi-million dollar scheme to get the children of wealthy parents into prestigious universities. And it was a day of mixed signals on Wall Street. In the end, the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 14 points to close at 25,516. But the Nasdaq also fell five points, and the S&P 500 slipped two. Still to come on the news hour, what happens now that the Mueller investigation has concluded? A review of Russia's interference in the 2016 election. And British citizens react to Brexit as it enters a critical week.